weather is ending and spring begins, but unfortunately we're learning in a hurry that the gun violence in our city, it's far from seasonal. Oh, so you just learned that it has nothing to do with the season. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they're making progress. They figured out at the crime, murder, and mayhem in the stand, and especially in this principality, this Stanian municipality known as Philadelphia, has nothing to do with the season. So we're moving in the right direction. I hit one if you're encouraged by this <laughs> revelation, man. The cold weather is ending and spring begins, but unfortunately we're learning in a hurry that the gun violence in our city, it's far from seasonal. I'm Bill Anderson, and we continue our search for solutions, accountability, and progress in our battle to save our streets. Tonight we focus on the fact that it's up to all of us to make a difference, and Jeff Cole starts with a candid conversation with District Attorney Larry Krasner on his office and their responsibilities to make our streets safer. We've got 100 plus murders. The people look at the police and they look at the prosecutor. Tell me what you think of that number and where we're going throughout this year. We are dealing with the worst spike in gun violence over the last two, now almost two and a half years that we have seen in a very, very long time. I think it's awful. I mean, obviously every homicide is awful, but the numbers are very upsetting. It's the kind of thing that keeps us up at night. Our discussion with District Attorney Larry Krasner began with a focus on the grinding, unrelenting gun violence plaguing Philadelphia. On the day we sat down, there were 103 homicides, one more than last year. Are we going to outstrip the horrific homicide numbers of last year at 560 at the end of 2022? The truth is I don't know. But I will say this, you know, from, from the beginning, what we have seen is that it was about 1.5 homicides per day in Philadelphia during the period of the pandemic. Um, right now, right now, we're very close to where we were last year. I mean, the terrible news is we're close to where we were last year. The good news is we're not twice as high. What is he talking about? And I know a lot of you guys complain that I play this stuff over again. You're like, you play it over too much. Sometimes I have to replay what they say because I can't either believe it or I can't decipher it. In this case, I have no idea what let him go Larry's talking about. I'm trying to follow his train of thought, what his point is, because they talked about solutions and accountability. That's how they opened up the this, this segment. And I'm trying to see where that winding, that wasn't even a word salad. That was just like a, I don't know, it was just a winding. Tofu salad. That was nothing. Like it was just black tofu and rice cakes. Like, what was that? The truth is, I don't know. But I will say this you know, from, from the beginning, what we have seen is that it was about 1.5 homicides per day in Philadelphia during the period of the pandemic. Um, right now, Right now, we're very close to where we were last year. I mean, the terrible news is we're close to where we were last year. The good news is we're not twice as high. Krasner, elected and re-elected on a platform of criminal justice reform that rejects what he calls mass incarceration, holds firm to his argument that funding prevention efforts will lower crime. Okay, so this is where he gets the nickname Let Him Go Larry and Mr. Softy. And now the people, you heard he was elected and he was just reelected last year. So this wasn't, this isn't like nothing happened to the Sun community of Philadelphia. This is no terrible calamity that befell them. They aren't cursed. 
This isn't God's plan. They elected this guy. And they just re-elected him last year in the middle of the most deadly year in their city's history. So this is, let, let's not act, because a lot of people say, well, man, pray for Philly. <laughs> nah, that, this ain't, you can't pray for this. Pray for Philly would be if something was happening to them. They're doing this to themselves. But this is where he got the name Let Him Go Larry and um, Mr. Softy. Because um, even in the midst of this, this hell wave that's going over his city, he st stands firm. He's holding fast to his belief. He's not even going to let. Oh, yeah, look, man. <laughs> 48 laws of power say be flexible. You know. Be pliable. Be able to, you know, look at new information and make different decisions. Be able to see, you know, the zeitgeist, see the way things are going and redirect and change course. He like, nah. I still feel the same with the, the, the plan I had coming in when Philly had about 280 murders a year. Is the same plan I'm going to keep now when they have 560 a year. I'm not changing anything. Because changing something will mean more sun men in prison. Because that's who's doing all of this. Make no mistake about it. 90% of this is being done by Sunman. 90. Krasner, elected and re-elected on a platform of criminal justice reform that rejects what he calls mass incarceration, holds firm to his argument that funding prevention efforts will lower crime. The more we put into prevention, which does mean you take money away from stupid. Stupid is putting homeless people in jail and spending $60,000 a year to do it when you could take those $60,000, put it into public education, summer camps, treatment, all these other things that are much more effective. So why, though, is the perception something different? It isn't. It that, is. No, it, it is. In part, no. it is. Jeff, no, it's yes. not. Yes, no, it, it is. I'll tell you how oh, I know you it is. know. I mean, come on, you can no, walk out there and, and folks will say, yeah, Krasner's doing a good job, and others will say, no, nope, no, nope, he lets them walk. A small number. Salute to this Glacier Glider reporter. There's... Who thinks that there's one Sun Man reporter or Sun Woman reporter that got the kahunas to push back on this guy's BS and to challenge him on his BS? This guy's this this Larry Krasner guy's obviously unqualified. Like, do they have affirmative action for glacier gliders? <laughs> Like how did he, how did he get through law school and then he's an idiot and this guy salute to this guy for pushing back I and mean, no no people are dying in the streets every day old lady women are being slaughtered not like she oh she set him up and then he came back and got no random women are being slaughtered by people they've never seen until the moment they die. Not, well, she should have known that. No, just some woman walking home be, every day in Philly just getting slaughtered. Some woman just standing there. Kids. Being slaughtered every day in Philadelphia. Along with the, you know, sun teens and the criminal element. Salute to this guy for standing up to this. Because, listen, man, y'all watch my show, my, you know, the nightly, well, watch my show every Tuesday and Friday at 9.30 p.m., you know, on Oc Nation TV. 
And, you know, we challenge this stuff. We don't, like, hold on, what you say? Hold on, what, run that back. We don't just let libs come in there and just say anything. I salute this reporter, man. I salute him, man. Because it, it gets to a point where it's like, hold on, man. Salute to this reporter, man. The more we put into prevention, which does mean you take money away from stupid. Stupid is putting homeless people in jail and spending $60,000 a year to do it when you can take those $60,000 and put it into public education, summer camps, treatment, all these other things that are much more effective. So why, though, is the perception something different? It isn't. It that, is. No, it, it is. is. In part, no. it is. Jeff, no, it's yes. not. Yes, no, it, is. it isn't. I'll tell you how oh, I know you it know. Is. I mean, come on, you can no, walk out there and, and folks will say, yeah, Krasner's doing a good job, and others will say, no, nope, no, nope, he lets them walk. A small number will. Here's the reality. Well, what the institutions don't get, and this also includes not you, but this does include the media, what they don't get is that progressive prosecutors are being elected and reelected all over the country. Yeah, and that's the... I can't believe this guy's that much of an idiot. And that's why this is happening all over the country. That's why Milwaukee's having a, a murder spike. Louisville. Jackson, Mississippi. Atlanta. Seattle. Portland. Minneapolis. Everywhere, St. Louis, Kansas City, D.C., Baltimore, everywhere there's a liberal prosecutor. This is happening. He can't make that connection. Instead, he brags about that. Which make, like, this guy's, I would love to see this guy's IQ, man. Maybe that's why some people voted for him. They felt, <laughs> felt a kinship, a bond with him. <laughs> he got a low IQ, too. <laughs> now we like to make honor people honorary son people. Usually it's a degenerate. Or some reject. <laughs> In this case, it's a guy with an extremely low IQ. Here's the reality. Well, what the institutions don't get, and this also includes not you, but this does include the media. What they don't get is that progressive prosecutors are being elected and reelected all over the country. On guns, Krasner argues making arrests for possession of a gun without a permit will not dramatically lower gun violence. The notion that the way you're going to solve shootings is arresting people for guns is missing the point. The way you solve shootings is arrest people for shootings. The way you solve homicides by gun is by solving homicides by gun. <laughs> and they're all like this. Like Kim, have you ever heard Kim Fox talk? She's dumber than this guy. Have you heard Kimberly Gardner in St. Louis talk? She makes this guy sound like Bill Gates. My God. The notion that the way you're going to solve shootings is arresting people for guns is missing the point. The way you solve shootings is arrest people for shootings. The way you solve homicides by gun is by solving homicides by gun. There's been a real problem trying to solve those. If you can't solve them, how, how do you get anywhere? Forensics. I mean, the, the fact is the city is decades behind on having the capacity to do a lot of forensics. Krasner argues on the gun cases police solve and bring to his office, his track record of prosecution is strong, but believes in Philly guns flow like water. The most important question is how have we done on our shooting prosecutions? How have we done on our uh, gun homicides? And we're doing extremely well on both of them. You know, that has to be the meat and potatoes of what you're trying to do. For every gun that is taken off the street, according to data from the AG's office and also data from the PPD, there are either two or three more guns purchased legally in the same time period. 
On the problem of witnesses and victims of crime failing to testify against their attackers? Fear is a factor. And the pandemic has made it worse because cases take a lot longer to conclude. So the potential for intimidation or the potential for fear of intimidation is out there. That's that's a real factor. If, if a witness doesn't show three or four times, which I think is just a three or four times, is that fear or is that I don't care? I'm it, not coming. It no, it depends. I mean, sometimes it's a friend or a family member who was angry enough uh, at the time they called the police to say this person has a gun or this pointed a gun. But feels differently later. Crash. Witness intimidation is part of the culture in Philadelphia. It's like woven into the fabric of the city. It's a huge issue there. Everyone like knows that except for this guy. It's not the the example he gave is like some random like scenario when the meat and potatoes of what's happening in these cases where people don't show up to testify is witness intimidation. That's the majority of the cases, not, oh, well, somebody's family member that said somebody like, oh, he's talking to son people. Forgot it. He's talking now, he's talking to another glass. <laughs> I see what's happening now. He's used to talking to sun people. Mammies and sisters who, you know, because brothers in Philly, they ain't politically active like that. You know, on this level as the sisters are. Sisters are the... The sisters are the ones that, you know, drive the, you know... The, the ship. Um, so he's used to talking to single mothers and mammies. And, you know, basically telling them that, you know, their sons, he's not going to lock their sons up and their baby daddies up. And that low level, low vibration, base, you know, vernacular and talking points he has to use to convey his, you know, to, to win those 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 women over is very, you know, rudimentary and elementary. And now he's talking to a a glider who's probably got a bunch of degrees, been in journalism, read thousands of books, knows a bunch of stuff, and it's like his <laughs> he's being exposed if a, if a witness doesn't show three or four times which i think it's just a three or four times is that fear or is that i don't care i'm it, not it coming no it depends i mean sometimes it's a friend or a family member who was angry enough uh at the time they called the police to say this person has a gun or this pointed a gun but feels differently later. Krasner says his office emptied the till of money it had to relocate victims of crime, but even after receiving more funding, it's a challenge. Do you have enough? Can you take somebody out of their community in North Philly and put them someplace where they're not going to be threatened? Is there enough around for that? Enough money for that? Uh, the average cost of relocation is usually something like $30,000 for what we do here. It's, you know, it's very, it's, it's very difficult. And it, and it, it so how many people can you move at 30000 a head? Not a ton. With his view that education, improved housing, and slowing evictions can be crime-fighting tools, D.A. Krasner has battled a perception he is soft on crime. We pressed him on a view we've heard from some cops on the street. If I were to say to you that come, some cops say, you know what, I'm not going to make arrests here because my perception is Krasner's going to let them out. What would you say to that? I'd say they should be locked up because that's a crime. Of course, the toughest statement he's made in this whole interview was against a cop. He didn't even bat a die. A full-throated, quick response. Lock him up. That tells you a lot. Not those people, those guys need to be investigated or 
No, um, we need to meet with them or no, lock them up instantly. So his stance towards cops is no nonsense. Swing the guillotine. His stance towards son criminals. <laughs> is can I fluff your pillow? <laughs> Let me take your shoes off. Kick your feet up. Can I, can I refill your cup? This is what we're talking about here. Look at the way he he, 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 he views cops that are justifiably at their wits then. If I were to say to you that come, some cops say, you know what, I'm not going to make arrests here because my perception is Krasner's going to let them out. What would you say to that? I'd say they should be locked up because that's a crime. Yeah. You, you know, do, you think that's, do you think that's out there in some way? I, I know that it's out there with some of them, but I will tell you this, that is criminal activity. And don't let me catch them doing it because they're going to have a problem.